This screencast is on the periodic chart of ions. We're going to use the periodic table of elements here and combine it with our previous work with orbitals and electron configurations to come up with a study guide here called the periodic chart of ions. In this study guide, we've replaced the elements here with ions. Now an ion is just a positively charged atom or molecule. And note here that on the left, we have all the alkali metals as in the periodic table of elements. In group 1A, which is the alkali metals, wants to donate one of their electrons over here with a non-metal to form some sort of compound. So we've represented all of these with positive charges, single positive. In the same manner, the alkaline earth metals are all represented by a positive 2 charge. And then underneath there, there's actually names for these ions. On the right here, you see the noble gases, which are already stable, so they don't have ions associated with them. And then carbon, boron, and silicone also do not have ions associated with them normally. But if you look at the halogens, you see these are ions with negative charges, negative one, and that's representative of them wanting to accept an electron from another element. Since they have seven electrons normally around the atom, one more brings that ion into a stable state and puts it as eight in the valence shell. In the middle here, with the transitional metals, you have ions that have variable charges. For example, copper can be copper 1 as a single plus, or copper 2 as a plus 2 ion. In other words, it is missing two electrons here. And then over here in the middle, we have some polyatomic ions, and we'll talk a little bit more about those in a minute. But Ions can occur, like we just mentioned, as a single atom, or can be a combination of atoms forming an ion together. And these actually, you'll learn, are held together by covalent bonds, versus these ions form ionic bonds. Covalent bonds for all these polyatomic ions to form ions, and then ionic bonds to form either two ions together, or an ion and a polyatomic ion. And we'll give you examples of all of these. Let's start off with something that everybody is familiar with. Sodium chloride. That's a ionic bond of this molecule. It's a sodium atom getting together with a chlorine atom. This one over here wants to donate an electron, chlorine wants to accept it, and they both want to be like argon over here with a valence shell totally full of eight electrons. Here they are again, sodium, chloride, one electron in a valence shell, seven electrons in a valence shell. We want to send one of these electrons over here to form an octet like argon. This is how it happens. Simply sends it over, forms an ionic bond, and an ionic bond is just a loss or gain of electrons, and it happens, happens between a metal and a non-metal. And it forms NaCl, which is sodium chloride. And these ionic bonds are kind of like glue, and it's an electric attraction. So they're held together by a strong electrical attraction, positive, negative, and it's the glue that holds the molecule together. In a similar manner, we can also take the next element in period four here, which is potassium, and its behavior is very similar to what we just saw with salt. 
and we're going to form potassium chloride uh, when we come up with the molecule chloride all we do is just drop the in e ending of chlorine and change it to ide and if you don't know that um, the best way all you want to do is take the chlorine ending here, I-N-E, and change it to I-D-E. Here they are again. It doesn't matter how many electrons are in the inner shells. We're just worried about the outer shell, the two outer shells. And then they form together, eight of them together. By donating an electron, it becomes potassium chloride. Let's just review covalent bonds for a moment. The simplest covalent bond we have is a hydrogen to hydrogen bond. Covalent bonds are a little bit different than ionic bonds. Covalent bonds share electrons and they typically occur between a non-metal and a non-metal. So the easiest covalent bond to ever think of is the molecule hydrogen. And we're going to combine one hydrogen atom with another hydrogen atom. Their Lewis dot diagrams look like this. Just one electron, one electron forms a shared electron. This is what this long looks like. This long line looks like here. And it forms the H2 diatomic molecule. There's seven diatomic molecules on the periodic table. They're hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. And we're going to review those in just a moment here. Here's an example of how chlorine forms. Chlorine has in its outer valence shell seven electrons. Two of these to get together. They have one electron that they want to share. They form a covalent bond here. It becomes Cl2. Here's how they look as you're looking at the molecule. A simple bond here, and then two atoms on either side. Let's take a look at a couple other diatomic molecules. This is oxygen. Note that oxygen has six electrons in its valence shell. So two of them get together and they have to share two of these electrons each. It becomes a bond which has two lines on it. Nitrogen has five electrons in its valence shell. Two of these on the outside are okay, and nitrogen, when it forms its diatomic molecule of N2, shares these one, two, three on this side, and one, two, three on this side, and forms a triple bond. So some covalent bonds are double bonds, and some are triple bonds. And as I just mentioned, some of these polyatomic ions, if you take a look at your periodic chart of ions. You can find these two compounds. You should be familiar with ammonium. And this here is perchlorate. This has a positive charge. This is a negative charge. These are both covalently bonded compounds. And they're going to actually get together to form a ionic bond between the two of them. So these ions have covalent bonds, but the resulting compound is held together with an ionic bond. Let's go through a couple of other examples here. Uh, we can look at potassium chloride. Simply use this here, the chart, and look up potassium. It has a charge of plus. Chlorine has a negative charge. They come together and it becomes potassium chloride, KCl. Here's an example of magnesium, which is plus 2. Phosphorus, which is negative 3. 
they want to get together, but since the electrons don't quite match, you have to have three of these atoms for every two of these atoms to each form six positive charges, six negative charges, and we write that with a subscript. So it becomes magnesium three, phosphorus two, it becomes magnesium phosphide. In most of the compounds, ionic compounds end in an IDE. When I was constructing that last slide, I was thinking, what the heck? I, I, I was thinking, is that an IDE ending? So I just looked it up in Wolfram Alpha. And here it is, Mg3P2, magnesium phosphide. As we mentioned, some of the transitional metals have variable charges, like for example, lead two, and this is lead four, positive two charge, positive four charge. When it combines and forms an ionic compound with oxygen, you get PbO2 and PbO, depending on which variable charge you use, and it's either lead four oxide or lead two oxide. And you need to have these Roman numerals here to denote which variable ion of lead you're using. And here's one more example using the same variable charge with lead 2 or 4, combining with the polyatomic ion, which is hydrogen carbonate, HCO3 minus, and you either have PbHCO3-2 or PbHCO3-4, which is lead 2 hydrogen carbonate and lead 4 hydrogen carbonate. The rules for naming these ionic compounds are in your book and are pretty straightforward. Thank you for watching this screencast.